Hi everybody, this is week 4 and this is lecture 1 part 1 for this week uh, so you are still in topic 3 uh, but this topic is, uh, this lecture is part 2 of the topic 3 uh, the second part of uh, topic 3 is about internal control uh, I think in the previous lecture I have uh, introduced you to the definition of internal control the, I think the simple definition for internal control is policies and procedures uh, to ensure the safety of a business asset and accounting records Okay, in this lecture you will see uh, a little bit deeper about uh, internal control and let's see uh, particularly about internal control related to cash Okay, this is again the definition of internal control uh, effective internal control is very important uh, see the second point internal control is defined as the procedures and processes used by a pro by a company to save to safeguard its asset uh, process information accurately ensure compliance with law and regulations so that's why the control in effective internal control is important if you have a business, you have to have internal control to make sure that your asset is safe and then your the information that you record whether it is accounting information or non-accounting information uh, accurate and to make sure that your business complies with uh, laws and regulations if you do not have effective internal control then you cannot achieve these three uh, things okay point number three companies to maintain effective internal controls over the recording of transactions and the preparation of uh, financial statement so you are learning about accounting now so the focus of uh, this topic is about internal control related to accounting so sometimes we call it uh, accounting control or something internal control related to accounting system of a business okay these are the objectives of internal control the objectives of internal control are to provide reasonable assurance that first assets are safe safeguarded and used for business purposes purposes second business information is accurate and third employees and managers comply with laws and regulations see so here it shows uh, the slide shows you uh, objective of internal control if you have a business, you will have many assets. The business will have many assets like cash, inventories, equipments, building, motor vehicle, etc. So you have to make sure these assets are safe. Safe from stolen, safe from natural disasters, etc. So you have to have internal control. Uh, these are uh, the, the, the policies and procedures to make sure the assets are safe and then about the accurate information information when you have a, an accounting system in your business you have to make sure that only accurate information and data are recorded if, if you record inaccurate data and information then the, the accounting system uh, uh, it's not uh, effective uh, it does not uh, produce something that is uh, useful for your business and then internal control also 
is used to, to ensure the compliance with law and regulations. So, internal controls uh, is one thing that can be used to prevent employee fraud. If you have a business, you will have uh, most of the time you will have many employees. You have many workers. Workers uh, can do fraud. So internal control can be used to to prevent workers from doing the fraud. To minimize the opportunities for the employees to do fraud. So let's see point number one. A serious concern of internal control is preventing employee fraud. Employee fraud is the intentional act, act of deceiving an, empl uh, an employer for personal gain. Okay, these are the elements of internal control. The three internal control objectives can be achieved by applying the five elements of internal controls. These elements are as follows. The first one is control environment. The second one is risk assessment. Uh, the third one is control procedures. Number four is monitoring. Number five is information and communication. Okay, I think we will see one by one these elements. These elements are like factors. Uh, related to internal control. Okay, the first one is control environment. And then uh, this figure shows interrelation uh, between the five elements. Uh, control environments, risk assessment, control procedures, monitoring and information and communication. So the most important thing is, the most important element is the control environment. Control environment is like the overall fields in the in a business or organization. If in overall it feels that the business uh, make it important for everybody to 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 follow the control procedures and policies, then everything in the business is will be under control. If the control environment is not good, uh, for example, the top uh, managers are very loose. Uh, they, they do not uh, serious about control environment. Then everything or other elements also will not be uh, effective. Like I said earlier, control environment is very important. The control uh, environment is the overall attitude of management and employees about the importance of controls. Three factors influencing a company's control environment includes the following. First, management's philosophy and operating style. If the management is serious about internal control, then the control environment is good. Everybody in the business uh, will comply with the control procedures and the internal control can be implemented very effectively if not then the the internal control will not be uh, effective second point here the company's organizational structure and the third point is the company's personal policies if the structure is good the organiza organizational structure is good then uh, Effective internal control can be implemented. Okay, if the organizational structure is weak, it's not good, then uh, effective internal control cannot be implemented in a in an organization. See here in the in in this figure, organizational structure, CEO employees management philosophy and operating style, personal policies. So everything has to be good for effective internal control can uh, to be implemented. Otherwise, it is not. Uh, the internal control cannot be made effective. Risk assessment. 
This is, I think, the second element of the uh, internal control. All businesses face risks such as changes in customer requirements, competitive threats, regulatory changes, and changes in economic factors. Management should identify such risks, analyze their significance, assess, assess their likelihood of occurring, and take any necessary actions to minimize them. A business has to assess risk and the business will take uh, will take risk if they think that they they can uh, somehow uh, control the risk or mi uh, minimize the risk and if they think that the 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 gain from taking the risk is high enough uh, if the risk is high but the return from taking the risk is low then it is not it is not worth uh, for the business to to take the risk uh, management should identify such risks Analyze their significance, assess their likelihood of occurring, and take any necessary actions to minimize them. So, if you have a business, uh, know that risk assessment is one element of uh, internal control, and make sure your business take risk. If you, if the you can control the risk or minimize the risk, and also if the gain from taking the risk is, uh, is is high enough to compensate uh, the the effort or the the risk that has been taken control procedures i think this is easier to understand and most important if you want to implement uh, implement internal control you have to have good control procedures okay control procedures uh, provide reasonable assurance that business goals will be achieved, including the prevention of fraud. Control procedures include the following. Okay, these things are uh, these are the procedures that you you can do if you have a business uh, to 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 make sure the safety of asset. Uh, accuracy of data and information and also to ensure the business uh, uh, comply complies with law and regulation so see here the first one con uh, competent personnel rotating duties and mandatory protection so if you have a business uh, you you must hire competent personnel competent personnel uh, most of the time, do less errors. Do less errors. Okay. And then rotating duties. If you have a business, you rotate your workers. Uh, for one month, these workers do... Uh, let's say you have a grocery shop. You have three workers. So for one month, this worker is... Uh, doing the uh, what they call as uh, uh, put all the goods in the on on the shelves uh, another person is uh, handling the customer another person is handling the store so that is for one month next month you rotate uh, this worker do uh, you change the the, the workers the workers that have handled the uh, stocks uh, this month will do something else next month. Maybe he will do the uh, handling, uh, customer handling, and then the, the person do something else. So you rotate the the, the workers. Why you sh uh, why you should rotate the workers to avoid st uh, stealing and errors. Uh, so if the first worker do something wrong when he handled the uh, stocks the 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 other workers who handle the stock in the next rotation will find the errors okay so so this will help you 
to make sure that uh, less errors and also less uh, uh, less chance of a worker to steal uh, anything from the business from the stocks and then mandatory vacations uh, I have heard that in many big businesses uh, particularly banks uh, they will ask their worker to take mandatory uh, vacations maybe uh, once in a year uh, the uh, the worker has to take mandatory vacations so during when the worker take uh, mandatory vacations somebody else will replace him or somebody else will audit his work uh, and check whether uh, errors happen or he do fraud or anything he he steal something from the business or anything uh, or he did uh, he do he does anything uh, against the law and regulations or anything so that is the this is how mandatory vacations can be used as a control procedure separating okay second point separating responsibilities for related operations so this is like uh, for uh, for a specific operation of a business it is a good idea to separate responsibilities so you you give three percent in charge of something uh, one person in charge of of this another person in charge of this another person in charge of another thing in uh, a unit of operation uh, when you do this uh, these three persons will check the, uh, check each other uh, if some uh, if one person do something wrong then the other person will know if you put only one person to responsible for everything in operation then if he do something wrong nobody knows okay and point number three separate separating operations custody of assets and accounting uh, so this happen uh, uh, mostly if the unit is receiving cash uh, you have a big business uh, one unit of your business or one segment of your business is uh, in charge of uh, receiving cash from customer so if you have that kind of unit you have to separate the person who keep the cash and also the person who record the cash at least two percent one person keep the cash or receive the cash and another person handle the record you need two persons because if some uh, if one person do something wrong then the other person will know and can uh, minimize error and also at the same time minimize the problem of uh, an employee steal the cash from the employer okay and then point number four proofs and security measures okay you can put CCTV in your business to make sure workers are, uh, are working according to their job specification, uh, working on time, uh, no stealing, no fraud or anything happen, and, uh, no uh, things against the rule and regulations. Control threats. Control procedures. So these are like uh, uh, to show the the way control procedures can be used. Uh, to make sure effective internal control in an organization. Monitoring. Monitoring the internal control system is used to locate weakness weaknesses and improve controls. Monitoring often includes of observing employee behavior behavior and accounting system for indicators of control problem so if you have a business and then you have implemented internal control so it is also important to to monitor everything to evaluate the uh, control environment the control the risk assessment and the control procedure from one uh, from time uh, maybe 
twice a year or something like that to make sure everything is sufficient and effective so that you can get the benefit of having uh, internal control in your business okay this uh, warning warning signs of internal control problem uh, warning signs with regard to people so let's uh, so see yeah uh, abrupt change in lifestyle without winning the lottery so let's say you have a, a business and then you have several workers and then suddenly you see one worker uh, suddenly become very rich uh, he has a lot of cash, he purchased expensive items uh, but and then it is a good idea to, to investigate uh, maybe he steals from the business uh, uh, let's say you found that he just won a uh, lottery or he got one lottery or other competitions or anything or he got inheritance so that is that is uh, that is uh, okay but if there is no thing like things like that so it is a possibility that the workers uh, steal from the business uh, and then see number point number two close social re relationship with suppliers if you have a worker that has very close relationship with suppliers he always suggests your business to purchase from these suppliers. Uh, that is a sign. Uh, that is, that is not a good sign. Maybe he got commission from the supplier. Uh, so, so you have to uh, aware about this point. Uh, number three, refusing to take a vacation. You have a worker. He handles, for example, he handles uh, cash or other sets in your business and he works every day he do not want to take vacation that is uh, not a good sign because maybe he is worried he he do he does something wrong so he does not want to take vacation because if he takes vacation somebody else will will uh, do his his work and found that will find that uh, he do wrong things okay that is not a good sign uh, number four frequent borrowing from other employees uh, if you see a workers uh, one of your workers always borrow cash uh, from other employees then that is not a good sign it shows that he's uh, he he is uh, he need cash and if he has opportunities he we maybe uh, there is a high possibility that he will steal from the business or organization so that is a uh, not a good sign and then uh, excessive use of alcohol or drugs so if you have a business you have uh, several employees and then you see one of your employees is uh, is uh, take alcohol or drugs excessively uh, then you have to be very careful this kind of this kind of workers uh, has high uh, possibility of uh, doing some uh, uh, taking or using or stealing from the business okay and then these are warning signs or bad signs from the accounting system okay if you see one of these uh, five things maybe there's a problem uh, with your internal control uh, related to accounting missing documents or gaps in transactions numbers 
could mean documents are being used for fraudulent transactions. An unusual increase in customer refunds. Uh, the refunds may be phony. It is not real refund, but the workers who handle the refund uh, take the cash, maybe. It can happen like that. Differences between daily cash receipts and bank deposits could mean receipts are being pocketed before being deposited. And then point number four, sudden increase in slow payments. Employee may be pocketing the payments. Employee take the payments. And put, uh, put the payment in his pocket. Not in the business bank account, but his own bank account or something like that. And then number five, backlog in recording transactions, possibly an attempt to delay detection of fraud. Okay, this I think the number, uh, the elements of internal control number five, information and communication, information about the control environment, risk assessment, control procedures, and monitoring is used by management for guiding operations and ensuring compliance with reporting legal and regulatory requirements. Management also use external information to assess events and conditions that impact decision making and external reporting. Information and communication is very important. If you have a business, uh, you have to implement good uh, control environment, risk assessment, good control procedures, good monitoring, and also you have to, to have a good communication. You have to tell everybody, everybody, all the workers has to have to aware about the, this, uh, this control, uh, inter uh, this internal control elements. If you do all the uh, control environment, risk assessment, and etc. Very good, but you do not communicate the things with your workers, then uh, maybe it is not good enough for your business. Okay. Okay, this is like uh, exercise, simple exercise. Identify each of the following as related to the internal control environment, risk assessment, or control procedures. So, you, uh, this question, this simple exercise, shows that you have to know what is control environment, what is risk assessment, and what is control procedures. So, you have to remember, you have to remember what what are these three things? So mandatory vacation. Uh, what do you think? Is it a control environment, risk assessment, or control procedure? I think um, mandatory vacation is a control procedure. Personal policies. Uh, so I think it is related to control environment. Report of outside consultant on future market changes. Uh, that this thing I think related to risk assessment. See control procedures, control environment, and risk assessment. So you have to know. You have to know the element, uh, the the five elements of the internal control. So these these are limitations of internal controls internal control so uh, after you have seen the previous slide you know that internal control is very important and also you you know that there are five elements of internal control even though you know that this uh, internal control is important and the five elements uh, you have to aware that if you have a business you implement good internal control still you Still, you will see several limitations. See, see here. Uh, the first point here. Internal controls can provide only reasonable assurance. <coughs> Excuse me. For safeguarding assets. 
processing accurate information and compliance with law and regulation. This is due to the following factors. See here, internal control cannot guarantee anything, but it can only provide reasonable assurance. Why internal control only can provide reasonable assurance? Because of the, these two factors. The first one is the human elements of controls. It means something like this. You have a good internal control system in your in your business. But you cannot guarantee. You cannot guarantee that your asset will be your assets will be safe, all your data, accounting data uh, is accurately recorded. You cannot guarantee because the 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 internal control is implemented by human. Human uh, can make errors intentionally or unintentionally. Okay, so that's why accounting, uh, sorry, internal control cannot provide guarantee, but it can provide a reasonable reasonable assurance and only. Okay, the second uh, limitations of internal control is it is subjected to cost benefit consideration okay how how to explain this it is something like this uh, the thing that can happen is let's say you have a business and then you know uh, all the elements that uh, all the elements of internal control that you have to implement you know all these five elements but sometimes you cannot you cannot do it because of the cost benefit consideration for example if you implement all the good internal control in your business the cost is like uh, more than 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 your business can afford okay that is the limitation of internal control sometimes you know what to do what is the effective in internal control to be implemented but you cannot do it because the cost is very high for your business so there is a limitation okay so that this is more specific okay in the previous slide you have been you have seen in general about internal control now it is specific to cash internal control for cash so uh If you read the textbook and also if you read other textbook you will see that uh, I think all the textbooks will will discuss or cover uh, internal control for cash why because first cash is very important for a business if you have a business cash is very important Without cash, you cannot pay your workers, you cannot pay your uh, suppliers, you cannot pay your uh, electricity, etc. Very difficult. If a business does not have sufficient cash, cash then it is very difficult for the business to continue its operation. That is the first one. The second thing uh, that makes uh, cash is important is because cash is uh, some uh, very liquid asset and can be stolen very easily. Uh, you put cash, $1,000 cash on your table, in 5 minutes, somebody can, can, can steal it. If you have a business, you put $100 on your, in, on your table, uh, you turn somewhere else and it can be stolen by your workers, by your customers, etc. So cash is very important. That's why you have, if you have a business, you have to have very good internal control for cash. 
Okay, let's see here. This like cash includes coins, currency, or paper money, checks, and money orders. Money on deposit with a bank or other financial institutions that is available for withdrawal is also considered cash. Cash is the asset most likely to be stolen or used improperly in a business. So you have to have good internal control for cash. So you have to have good control for cash receipts. Uh, very important. If you have a business, very important for you to have good internal control for cash receipts. You have to control. Uh, you have to have good internal control for to make sure that the cash received from customer is uh, is uh, is safely deposited deposited into into the business bank account and also uh, the the record is accurate. Uh, I don't want to uh, explain in detail about this. Uh, I will uh, explain in brief only because I think the this chapter, uh, this topic three, uh, is like uh, introduce you to the uh, internal control uh, and accounting system system in brief. Okay, so. It's, now you know that control internal control for cash is important and then the most important thing is to control of cash receipts okay and then you have to do uh, there are several things that can be done to control uh, to to control the cash receipts okay see here uh, most businesses most big businesses like uh, big supermarket they have very good uh, control for cash receipts uh, one of the thing that you they use to to control the cash receipts is the cash register uh, that's why when you pay when you go to the supermarket when you pay the cashier has to uh, to to record everything using the cash register and then the cash register will produce two receipts uh, one for you customer and another one for the, the for the accounting department of the business uh, the accounting department will use the the receipts to do the accounting record you can keep the record if you want to to return the items or anything and then uh, at the end of the day each cashier has to to calculate the cash to make sure that the amount in, of cash is same like the amount recorded in the in the receipts. So this uh, this is the way businesses do the uh, cash receipts control. Okay, see here, very important. There is a way to record. If there is any difference, difference, differences between the uh, the amount of cash and the receipts, uh, then there is a uh, there is a way. Uh, there is a general general entry uh, that need, uh, that that is need to be done. So. Cash received in the mail. I think this is not common now. Many many years ago, uh, many businesses when they they sell something, uh, they sell something in in newspaper. So they ask the customer to send uh, uh, cash uh, by post. Uh, most of them will ask the customer to send money order or postal order. So there is a way to control that. Now it is uh, not very. Uh, now this is not common uh, because now most businesses, if they sell something, uh, they ask the customer to 
to do uh, to deposit money using an online banking so easier if the customer deposit money using an online banking uh, they the business uh, can check uh, the, the the deposit they have like a bank statement and also they have they can trace everything so this is like things things of the past so the cash received by EFT electronic fund transfer now you can see now in many supermarkets we can pay things using uh, what they call as uh, what they call as F post or something electronic funds transfer at point of sale i don't i am not sure about the term that they use now but you can give your bank card to the cashier and he can swipe the card or we can use what they call it now they don't have to swipe the card they just like we can touch the card uh, and and we can pay electricity we can pay groceries and it, and everything so you, there is uh, there are uh, controls procedures for that to make sure uh, accurate data is recorded etc eft okay uh, control of cash payments if you have a business in the future your business will have to pay cash to somebody or to another party. You pay your suppliers, you, you pay your suppliers, you pay your worker salaries, you pay the you pay bank for bank loans, you pay utilities, etc. So where if uh, for this you have to have good internal control. Uh, because if you do not have a good internal control, the workers who handles the payments can steal from the business instead of paying the suppliers this worker can can deposit money into his own bank account it can happen so you have to have good internal control to make sure the fraud uh, will not happen and errors will not happen that's that's why you have to do internal control voucher system this is related to for the purchase of goods a voucher is supported by suppliers invoice or purchase order and receiving report this is like uh, a voucher system is a set of procedures for authorizing and recording liabilities and cash payment uh, this is still related to cash payment it may be either manual or computerized cash cash paid by EFT electronic funds transfer now businesses they can pay by online banking using online banking so that that kind of proce uh, process also needs effective internal control otherwise the workers can can pay somebody else or even the workers can uh, pay himself instead of the instead of doing things for the business so and also uh, businesses they have bank accounts they have to control that also uh, if you have a business and then you will keep cash in hand and also cash in bank uh, when you keep cash in bank you need somebody uh, maybe your worker to deposit the cash into the bank in the the business cash into the bank so these workers has the opportunity to take the cash uh, or he deposits the cash less than what he is supposed to do uh, let's say uh, one day uh, when you close your shop uh, you have thirteen thousand dollar cash and you assign this worker to deposit the thirteen thousand dollar into the uh, business bank account. So.
So this worker, uh, he can deposit only twelve thousand. Uh, if you do not have a uh, good internal control, you will not know. Uh, you thought that every day he deposit the cash, uh, but he deposit less than he supposed what he is supposed to do. So that is the thing. So that's why you need good internal control for your bank account. And there are many things, other things. Uh, sometimes bank bank can do errors. Uh, so, so if you have a good internal control, you can identify the errors. Okay. So in accounting, we have something called bank reconciliation statement. Bank reconciliation statement. Bank reconciliation statement is a document prepared by a business to check why the amount of cash recorded in a business is different compared to amount recorded uh, amount of cash recorded by the bank if you prepare bank statement then you will know uh, items that causes uh, amount recorded by the business and the amount recorded by the bank that that causes the, the difference amount recorded by the bank and the business so very important i think uh, you will learn about how to do bank reconciliation in later chapters in a later chapter uh, and then you if you have a business uh, most of the time you have petty cash petty cash is uh, is used by a business to pay for small items uh, the business will keep, will keep cash, small amount of cash, uh, for paying small items. So if you have a petty cash in your business, you have to have a good co uh, internal control for that also. Otherwise, uh, the workers who handle the petty cash can can do errors, or can steal the cash. So you have to have a good internal control for petty cash. Thank you very much. That is the end of the lecture for today. Do not forget to write your name and metric number in the comment section. I will take that as the lecture attendance for today.